With interest rates on the rise, we're getting asked by several of our buyers and sellers, is this a sign of the market softening? Can things cool down? Uh, can we expect things to cool down here in the Austin area? In today's video, we're going to give you some insight to what you should expect if you're getting into the Austin market. Stay tuned. What's happening, everybody? Ian Grossman here, your realtor in Austin, Texas. Hey, y'all, I'm Lindsay Fenton, and we are the Fenton Grossman Group. Back at it here to educate you, inform you, keep you in the know on what's happening in the Austin real estate market. Remember, this is your one-stop shop for all the goods. So make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, so you don't miss out on any big developments. And don't forget to check out our relocation guide that gives you all the things you need to know about Austin, and the link is in our description. Definitely check that out. Um, if you're moving here, if you're buying a home here, you probably want to know what in the world is happening uh, in the Austin market today. Things are changing like crazy, especially with all that's going on in the world right now. We've got gas prices exploding, going through the roof. We've seen interest rates going crazy up, down. It's hard to keep track of all of it. But we're getting this constant question that keeps coming up. With interest rates going up, is this going to cause the softening? that so many people are waiting for, trying to time the market mm -hmm. uh, in Austin, really all over the country, but Austin specifically. Um, so we're gonna get into that today, what we're seeing in the market and if interest rates are the answer to uh, the market cooling off a little bit. So from an interest rate standpoint, as of today, we're in March 10th, when this video is gonna come out, it'll probably be in the next few days, but hopefully there won't be a huge fluctuation of rates. 30-year um, conventional loan, 4.375%, which, I mean, if you were looking earlier at the beginning of the year in January, you were down in the low to mid threes. Right. So buyers are seeing already this, this big spike, but do you think that's enough to take so many buyers out of the market where we have some relief in inventory? No, I don't. You know, yes, it is going to take some buyers out of the market, but even whenever we were selling real estate in 2016, 2017, interest rates were four and a half, four and a quarter, and we still had multiple offers yeah. on things. You know, it wasn't as crazy as it, is, as it is now, but there's still, we just have so much demand and no inventory. Yeah, in 2017, that's when I bought my house in Circle C, mm -hmm. and I remember um, rates were in the low fours, we locked in four and an eighth, uh, but there was a house around the corner from us that got 19 offers. Wow. So this was, this was still happening back in 2017. Mm -hmm. We're at a lot less inventory today. Um, and we were on a listing appointment the other day where the seller asked us, you know, from a timing standpoint, should, should we wait? Should we list now uh, because of interest rates? Like is, are things softening to where maybe, you know, we're not going to get as much money for our house and predicting that is kind of hard for us right. to do, but we're not seeing the demand slow down and inventory hasn't picked up. So take advantage of what you know today when in, in terms of selling. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna share a few examples of what we're seeing in resale and new construction to educate you, to give you an idea of what to expect if you're getting into the market today. So another example of what we're seeing in the market today is there are 1,630 homes on the Austin MLS. So that means everything in primetime Austin, two hours outside of Austin, everything, every single family home on the market, 1,630. And what does that mean? So as of last month, we had about half a month of inventory. So if everything were to sell in the Austin MLS, it would only take 15 days to sell everything. And I don't see the next report, which usually comes out around the middle of each month. Mm -hmm. So in mid-March, the February report will come out. I don't see that changing much. It might even go down from the month prior. Yeah. Um, you know, it was right around 0 0.4, 0 0.5 months, which is not sustainable. I, mean, I feel like we've been broken record. We've been saying that for over a year now. Yeah. Um, that it's not sustainable. And this is resale and new construction. Mm -hmm. um, one example, I called a builder, uh, actually sent them an email to try to get on one of their priority lists. So they put out this priority list and said, um, you have to fill out an application and once we've hit our capacity, then we're not taking any more people on this priority list. They said within minutes, they got 365 applications crazy. for buyers for um, just a few of the floor plans. 
that they were getting ready to release within minutes and they had to close their portal down and, and, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you're not uh, right there on your computer, right? And to do it as soon as these homes are released, it's like you might miss out on them. Yeah. And you know, that's what we always are talking to our clients about is like, we just really have to hone in on what you're looking for. If, if you really want new construction, we need to figure out where, what builder, because things like this happen and it, everything is gone in minutes. Yeah. So when buyers that are spreading themselves too thin and kind of not sure where they want to live, you're really doing yourself a disservice mm -hmm. because you can't jump on these opportunities when they come. One more new construction uh, example. I was up in Leander um, at, in a neighborhood in Northwest, the Northwest part of Leander. And each month they release like 10 to 15 ish homes mm -hmm. and do a bidding system. They released 10 homes last month, 300 bids. That's what you're going up against. Um, they couldn't give any information about high how high over asking price the bids were going, but I could imagine with an average of like, like 30 bids on each home, it was probably going you know significantly over the asking mm -hmm. price. Well, I know that same builder that they're actually building in Pflugerville. Yes. And one of their plans, they did a release and it was listed at 583,000 the highest bid was in the 700s. So it's, it's significant. People are, are wanting to get into Austin and they will, they'll pay for it. I'll let you get back to the video in just a second. Don't forget, Austin Relocation Guide, links in the description. How about resale? You um, experienced just a couple of weeks ago, uh, we had a listing in Olympic Heights, which is South Austin. And what do we see there? Yeah, so we had, almost 20 offers on that one and we can't disclose what it went for but it was significantly over and we had 61 showings in a matter of two three or three days. days yeah yeah um and it's funny because you know we'll post we do a lot of videos on youtube um, we're on instagram and tiktok a little plug if you haven't checked out uh, either of those pages but um, sometimes people will comment and they'll say well if you're getting 20 offers and they're going you know $150,000 over asking, then you underprice the home. That's the thing that you need to understand if you're buying in Austin right now. It's not really the case. These homes are, are priced where comps are showing and then buyers are coming in and just getting more and more aggressive. So that's not for every listing. We do see some listings that are grossly underpriced right. to kind of, uh, you know, encourage that bidding war. But for the most part, these homes are priced well and then buyers just a little crazy on yeah it. i mean that's what our job is our job is to price these homes correctly at market value because we don't want to leave any money on the table for right. our sellers and then a buyer it's whatever they're willing to pay for it and that's kind of what we say right now to our clients is that's you know market we, value yeah that's market value is what a buyer is willing to pay for it because we're showing you what market value is on paper but once you have 20 offers you just don't know yeah okay another big question we always are asked is you know, is cash king in this market? You know, is cash always gonna win? And that's not necessarily true. We do, there is a lot of cash in this market. And even if you're a financed offer, you still have to be, you still have to have cash in order to put your down payment or over appraisal. So another example we like to mention is there was a house that was listed at 700,000. It had 27 offers. And, and just a disclaimer, this wasn't one of our listings, but an agent posted this yeah um, i'm sure they got permission to, to do it but they posted this with all the details which is very helpful for us from an education standpoint which is why we're passing along to you right so out of the 27 offers 26 were financed so you know maybe the one cash one we don't know but it's highly unlikely a lot of times sellers at the end of the day it's financed or cash it's all the same to the seller it goes in their bank account and they don't care um, it's all going to come down really to price out of all 27 offers. Every single one had a full appraisal waiver. And that's just what you have to do in this market. It's how buyers that are getting loans are competing with cash mm -hmm. to kind of take that cash element out of it. Um, but yeah, that's showing that there were 25. Well, I guess they got 27 total offers, right? So 26 other buyers were willing to do that and are now looking for homes mm -hmm. the following week. Yeah. And I know we have some statistics on what the home, roughly what it went for. Yeah, so they um, they even gave us a breakdown, which not every agent does, but a little breakdown of where some of the offers were coming in. 
um, 11 of the offers that came in were between 14 to 24% over asking price. So they ranged on that 700 list price. Uh, offers were anywhere from 800 to 870. And then they got four offers that were over 875 uh, up to 940, which was roughly around 30-ish percent, give or take, mm -hmm. over asking price. So again, sometimes we see in these these homes where there's a few offers that are around the same and then like one offer just blows everyone else out of the water. Um, but right now, that's not always the case. People are getting aggressive and you see 20, 25%, 30% still didn't win on this specific house. Mm -hmm. So tips for you as a buyer. Um, I think the, the moral of the story is the interest rates are not having as big of an effect as you might think yet. If they go up to five, six, seven, eight, and people start freaking out, who knows if that's going to happen, then we'll talk. But where they're at now, you got to be ready to play. Mm -hmm. Got to be ready to compete. What's the, what, what's the word that uh, everyone looks, looks for these days yeah. that we say? Everyone wants a deal. You want a deal. Just doesn't exist. Ladies and gentlemen, viewers on YouTube, the deal is getting the house. Yes. In today's market, that's how it is. Mm -hmm. When will it soften up though? I don't know. I know we were talking and you know, even if we had five times the amount of homes we have on the market, we're still in a healthy seller's market. Mm -hmm. Which, what does healthy seller's market mean? It means maybe three offers. Like we were in a healthy seller's market when we got into the business yeah. and we were still in multiple offers. Like it was so cute, $5,000 <laughs> over, like great. <laughs> or full price, yeah. You know, that's still a healthy seller's market. So we have a, lo a long way to go. Yeah, um, get educated, watch our videos, talk to someone, if it's not us, talk to an agent that's in the market that sees it every day on both sides, buyers and listings. We're always here to help. We love taking your calls, emails, text messages, however you reach out to us. Um, we get a lot of them, a lot of yeah. people from all over the world. Um, so thank you for that. If this video is helpful for you, make sure you give us that thumbs up. As always, hit that subscribe button. We'll catch you on the next one. See ya.